Hello friends and welcome. I'm Sarah Liz and I have two Halloween projects for you today. Pixie Dust Designs just released these awesome Halloween mugs and we are going to glam up a mummy mug to get us started. So this mummy mug set also has like a little cupcake and a little skeleton cat situation, but I just wanted the mummy. There is some like stitching across the mummy mouth and when I cut it from regular cardstock, it shows you where to put that but I didn't, I didn't really want the stitching, if I'm honest. Um, I wanted this to be a little more glamorous. Is there a glamorous mummy? I don't know. Anyway, I cut it out of some white glitter cardstock and I'm using a Micron pen to go over the lines it debosses into the paper. They're a little hard to see on glitter cardstock and that's okay, right? So I'm taking my time, I'm going slowly and then when I get to the mouth, I'm just not going to try to go around the stitching lines. I'm going to go straight across. So I'm coming in from each side and then kind of where I stopped in the middle, that's where the stitching is. And I'm just going to kind of connect those with a curved line. Then I'm using my Ohuhu alcohol marker in CG2 and I'm going back over those lines. The Micron pen is an alcohol based pen. I will link it if I can find it. Um, it's archival ink. And so this is actually going to make that black pen bleed just a little bit and then add a tiny bit of shadowing around it. And I love what it does for this mummy. So we get this sort of shadowing effect that you might get from the wraps, but we still have all our glitter. Uh, I don't know why I love this. You guys, I just do. Okay, so I have three more of my alcohol ink markers and I'm gonna use those to color in the eyes. And this was a, a process, right? So I'm coming in with my lightest purple and then I'm adding some little lines in my mid-tone. And then I think if I'd have stopped here, it would have been fine. But I'm gonna come in with my darkest purple in my head, this was gonna be brilliant. And I'm like, oh, oh, uh oh. So we're gonna fix it, not to worry. I'm gonna take some Dusty Concord Oxide ink, which has some thickness to it, right? And I'm gonna go right over the top. And I love how that ended up. So you can just sort of see the variations in color and the striations of those dark purple lines. Then I'm using Sponge Sugar Oxide ink to go over, uh, this is like what's gonna be inside the mug. I suppose it could be coffee but I'm gonna go for a bubbling pink brew. So I have dripped some water very carefully with a paintbrush to create my bubbling something. And then I'll go over that with some pink alcohol markers. It actually doesn't add a ton of depth and dimension, but it's a little bit. When I bring in this darkest one, I'm coming in on just one side of each of those bubbles to create like a dark side, a little shadow. I'll go over the whole thing with a shimmer pen because of course it's a glittery bubbly pink brew and the white gel pen makes a huge difference here. So I'm coming in and adding highlights on the side I didn't add the darkness to and little dots of white gel pen in between some of those. And that will create, I think a lot of interest in sort of what we've put in our mummy mug. I have an A2 piece of pink cardstock and I'm gonna go ahead and glue that down onto my card base. And then I thought I would just bring in some pattern paper. I wasn't sure really um, where I wanted to go at first. So I brought out a couple different options uh, and I'm just gonna hold my mummy mug up against those to see which one I like better. I love these pink and orange pumpkins, but I didn't feel like there was enough contrast. It's actually a pretty light mummy with, with all that wrapping, despite the sort of black background around it. So I went with the eyeballs. I cut that down to three and a half by four and three quarters, and then I'm gonna add way more foam tape than I probably needed. <laughs> but I have this and I'm trying to use it up. Um, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of wet glue because this foam tape does not come up or give you wiggle room or anything. So I have just a little bit of a margin on all three sides. I like that we get to see sort of the pink of the cardstock and that's gonna coordinate with our bubbling pink brew that's inside of our mummy mug. And now I can start kind of getting the lay of the land. The mummy mug comes together very, very quickly, right? I'm gonna add a little bit of glue on the back of the white piece and then it just layers right over top of the black mug. There is a little like 
slice in the top where you could stick something inside of the mug. I did not on this occasion because I'm going to put my sentiment at the top, but there's lots of fun options and different ways that you could style this. And I completely forgot that there are more sort of wrappings that go around the handle. I had already cut them out. I just, you know, forgot to marker them up. So I'll bring my two pens back in and there's only a couple little debossed lines over here it's quick and easy but i am kind of tilting it my my lights in my studio are very bright when i'm filming and so if i tilt it at an angle um, it creates more of a shadow obviously my lights are to get rid of the shadow um, but creating the shadow helped me to find those lines and i'll go over them with the micron pen and then again with my cg2 there are debossed lines on the black cardstock piece there for the eyes, so I know exactly where they go. And I was like, I'll just glue straight onto the mug and then I can pick them up with my wax pickup tool. But um, all that ink was still a little bit wet and that, that got challenging. So I just picked them up with my fingers and then I will add our brew to the inside of the mug. I love the Pixie Dust Design mugs. Like, I, I'm sure you saw my Christmas ones in July. If you haven't, I will try to link to my Pixie Dust playlist because a lot of that playlist <laughs> is the mugs. Um, we did some like hidden message cards um, and some other really cool stuff with the mugs to make them interactive. You can do that with any of the mugs that they have, but I'd already kind of shown that to you. So I thought I would do something a little simpler, a little different. Um, and then I'll just kind of link you back to those if you're interested in making these a little more interactive. For my sentiment, I'm bringing in a stamp that says happy spooky season. I don't really do spooky, right? <laughs> Even with a mummy, I'm like glitter, sparkly things, pink. Um, but, but you know, it's, it's a fun sentiment. I liked the font, I think is really why I picked this one. And then I used uh, just a black pigment ink and I will heat emboss that only because it will smear and I didn't want to worry about it. So I trimmed it out and I rounded the corners and I was like, that'll work, right? I don't, I don't need to fussy cut this. I don't have dies for this sentiment. But in the end, I decided I really needed to fussy cut it. I wanted that look. I don't trust me with a pair of scissors trying to eyeball the bubble. In fact, I tried it twice. This is the third go round. And I was like, why am I not doing what I know to do? So I just draw right around it with a pencil so that I know where to cut. I can follow a line. <laughs> I just can't visualize it and cut it at the same time. Plus to get a good fussy cut, sometimes I wanna cut to the left and I cannot do that without a line because I can't really see where I'm going. So anyway, I just draw a little pencil line and then if I follow the line, everything's good. I'm gonna bring in some pale orange ink and I'm just gonna go about halfway up and I'm ink blending to create sort of an ombre effect. I like the idea that maybe it's whatever is steaming and bubbling out of this mug is affecting the color of our sentiment. And then I will shellac the back of both of them with all the foam tape. Again, there's so much foam tape on this one, you guys. I like black foam tape when I'm using dark die cuts but you wouldn't have to. If you have white foam tape, you can always go around the edges with a Sharpie marker um, just to help kind of hide it a little better. Maybe no one is looking at your cards from the side, but I look at my cards from the side and, and I don't know. I just, I have a strong preference there. I'm also adding glue behind these before I put them down just so I have a little bit of wiggle room. Thank goodness because this spooky season was a little bit crooked at first, but we'll get her straightened out and that will finish off a fun glam mummy card mug situation. I hope you like that one. But really for me, it's all about this next card. This is the Jack mug, right? And it is modeled off of one of our favorite spooky season characters. And so we have several characters actually in this little set, right? We have our little cupcake character and our ghost dog character. And I, I just had in my head that I wanted the scene from the movie poster on this card. So we're going to make a five by seven card, which is very unusual for me. And I sketched out, I am not an artist, you guys. I just sketched out a little swirly something and then a couple of hills. And then I used a circle die cut to create the moon. My circle is three inches in diameter, but really I just wanted it to be in proportion to my little swirly hill. 
um, and I changed it a bunch of times. So, it, you know, it kind of depends on how you go about it. Um, so I cut a mask using some masking paper with that three inch circle. And then I cut a hole in some cardstock that I'm using like a stencil. I went in with some antique linen distress ink, and then this is mustard seed that I'm coming very carefully just around the edges to create a little variation in that color. I'm gonna stamp my sentiment onto the moon. And so I didn't wanna use oxide inks, which is what I'm using for the rest of the card. And I, I knew I was gonna have some challenges um, if, I, if I used oxides. So here is my mask and I am just trying to separate the sky from the land. And I just went carefully and I kept sort of spinning my paper and keeping my scissors steady. Uh, it, it took a little time because I wasn't sure what I was doing. And full disclosure, I had used masks before, but usually from post-it notes. So this is Brutus Monroe masking paper. And this is a large piece of masking paper, which is going to cause a few challenges later on. What I found worked well was this. When I'm going to lay it down, don't take off all the backing at once. We're going to accidentally do that later. And it's not going to work out real well for us. I brought in my black five by seven card base just to create more contrast so I could kind of see where I was going. Um, I, I traced out what I wanted um, on my masking paper on a five by seven. So my actual white panel is a quarter inch smaller than that. And the black cardstock helped me to kind of get everything lined up. Most important, I needed the swirly bit in the middle of the moon and then everything else was gonna be fine. So I sort of laid that masking paper, masking tape down, and then I'll put my moon mask over top of where I ink blended my moon, and I am ready to start working on the sky. We're gonna keep it simple, okay? So I'm coming in with chipped sapphire, and I'm just gonna lay down some color all over the sky. It's a little splotchy, I want that. I want there to be variations in color, and then I will bring in Villainous Potion, one of my very favorite oxide inks, and I'm gonna come in it, kind of wherever we're getting a little further away from the moon, I left a little ring of just blue. I thought I owned antique linen in an oxide. Apparently not. Apparently I've just seen way too many YouTube videos with other people using it. So I brought in some white pigment ink and then this is mustard seed. I don't even think I've ever used this pad and it's kind of all dried out and really concentrated. So I got... <laughs> I got a little too much yellow in my white pigment ink and I will just bring in another block and some more white ink to thin that out or lighten that up a little bit. I don't wanna go straight into my white ink pad or I will have a yellow ink pad and that is not what I want. I just want a little bit of a halo around that moon. So I'm, I'm mostly on the mask. Most of what you're seeing is on top of that moon mask. And then I'm gonna pull that gently out and away then I'm gonna bring in Distress Ink in black, not the oxide. I feel like this gives me kind of a darker, blacker color where the oxide gives me a slightly grayish color. And I'm coming around just the outside, again, to create a little more variation in color. So then it's time to remove the masks. And what I learned was to go carefully. The mask came off of the Distress Ink a little better than it came off the Distress Oxide Ink. Um, when I take off this bottom piece, like it's not on top of ink at all anymore, but it, it's going to be on ink um, coming up here. So I am just peeling gently and I will pull back as much as I can. And then when I'm feeling like there's too much sticky stuff to deal with, I will bring in a piece of cardstock to just kind of hold the rest of that sticky business. I suppose I could have torn it in my head. I was like, maybe I can save the mask. I no, <laughs> no, I cannot save the mask. It's just too big and unwieldy, but I'll just peel that off very gently. And I had zero problems taking the mask off the moon and off of the bottom of my card. To ink blend the ground, we need to bring in the other half of that mask that we cut apart. And I tried to lay it down and I started at the top. I don't know why I did that. Um, the most important part is to get it to line up correctly against the ground that we've already inked. And so I had to lay it down and peel it back up. And that's how you see me really struggling to get that mask down because it's all trying to curl up on itself. I don't know why it curls like that. Um, anyway, I got it down. What I would do if I were doing it again is to take off only the backing that is right along um, the, the ground, the land, 
and then lay those pieces down and then peel off the rest of the backing paper once you get those lined up. I started with Uncharted Mariner, my other very favorite oxide ink, and I just laid down a thick layer, especially kind of over the moon. There is a little transition um, that goes kind of from the moon to some uninked areas, and I wanted to make sure there was enough ink there to cover that up. I wasn't real worried about it, um, but it did, it did take a fair bit of ink to do that. And then I'm coming in with chipped sapphire again. We used this in the sky, and so I'm having to be a little bit careful to make sure there's gonna be contrast. And I am leaving that Uncharted Mariner at the top, anywhere um, that would be, I guess, closest to the moon or have some moonlight on it. And then I will also bring in a little seedless preserves just on some of those top parts of the ground to create a little more variation in color. I kept going back and forth and kind of looking at the movie poster um, and quite frankly, I can't make what it looks like. <laughs> so this was my own sort of twist on the colors and some of those choices. I used VersaFine Claire um, Nocturne ink on the bottom and it's a really dark pigment ink and it, I wanted it to blend out a little better. So I just brought in a dry cloth to kind of blend that out moving up, up the ground. And then I will peel off this next bit of of the masking paper and I was having some problems right in here and the paper tore a little bit and I was like, oh no. So I brought in my heat tool just to loosen up the adhesive on that. This is what I do if I like put a card together and I wanna take it apart um, and fix something. And that was it. I just had to get that one little bit that tore up. But once that adhesive was slightly loosened, this came off beautifully, not a problem. I'm looking at the whole thing now, and actually I think the contrast between the sky and the ground is okay, but I decided um, there was a little bit of like white space I wanted to cover, and I wanted to bring in the texture that's on that hill, because this was claymation, and so there was a lot of really, really great texture in the figures and the spaces and things like that. So I'm bringing in a black alcohol marker. This is just my Ohuhu black marker, and I'm using the bullet tip and I am coming right along the edge of the ground where it sort of meets the sky. So I can cover up some of those little white gaps. And then I'm just flicking little lines in there. But like I mentioned during the mummy mug, I can't see squat. <laughs> like the, my lights are so bright that you can see the marker sort of fading just a little bit. You can see it and then you can't. That's how I felt too. That's not just the camera. And so, I'm gonna get these initial flicks down and then once the card is done and I can turn off my studio lights, I'm gonna go back over those and create some variation in width and texture um, and, and kind of clean that up so, so I like it better. But this gave me a starting point at least. Once I get all of those down, we can make our jack mug. It's not a lot of pieces, there are little tiny spaces for his nose and I just put a little bit of tape behind that so I had a place to sort of glue those into. And then the eyes are on there as well and they are debossed into the mug so you know exactly where everything goes. Same thing with the mouth. And I'm just gonna run a line of glue then over the debossed area and then it it's so quick and easy to put these together. You can also kind of see towards the top of the mug, there's a slice in this one too. So uh, this one comes with a wooden spoon or a die for a wooden spoon, and you could stick that in there. there. Please check out the Pixie Dust Designs website for this mug. The design team has outdone themselves making some really, really cool projects with this mug. And then there's also this little, um, almost like a candy cane, right? <laughs> this little sort of interesting detail to put on the handle to make that all kind of tie in together. Like this guy, just by himself, like, oh, I can't get over it. Um, Pixie Dust Designs sends me products um, from each release, and this was not going to be in what they sent me. And I was like, please, please, please. Um, I will buy it myself. <laughs> and Sandra sent it to me because she's awesome. And I was like, oh, put it in a video. It's gonna be amazing. I, yeah. I had like a little crazy moment. I go as this character for Halloween every year. It's been that way for, I don't know, since I started having children. Um, and then we have our little ghost dog. And there's just one piece to sort of fit behind his head 
to create the eyes and then there's the red nose and a little bitty collar again debossed lines to tell you where everything goes and it all comes together so quickly so i am adding a few more lines onto some of our smaller hills even though some of that <laughs> some of that's going to get covered up and you can see me kind of tilting the paper and trying to create a shadow so I can see a little bit what I'm doing as I'm as I'm moving along here I will add this inked panel onto a five by seven black card base because a white card base just wouldn't be suitable on this occasion <laughs> um, and that wet glue is going to help me get everything kind of all lined up and centered on there so I have just that little bit of margin and it helps it to pop off the background a little bit and then I love this character so much. I have a stamp set that says, this is Halloween. And I'm going to stamp that right into like sort of the top center of my moon. And I'm going to do this a couple of times. I'm using Honey Bee's Intense Black ink. I just switched to this one. And I got to tell you, it's kind of magical. I get a crisp, dark impression without having to heat set it, without having... Um, to wait forever for it to dry and that has been a dream. So I added foam tape all over the back of my mug and I'll add a little bit of glue because we're this far in and I am not risking putting this in the wrong spot or ending up with a crooked or anything like that. So I get just that little bit of float time and then I'm going to place him down to the bottom left. I'm going to wiggle it around a little bit until I like it and then we are going to add our other die cut to the inside and it's perfect. Normally I would put like a, a white piece of cardstock on the inside, cut down slightly from five by seven for a place to write, but this is a card where I am gonna use a white gel pen, right? <laughs> so that works pretty well. And you can see, I haven't fixed the lines yet. I finished the entire card before I was like, you know what? We need to do we need to do a little more detail in here so here is the final card where i've come in and spent some time really trying to create that texture and the layers for our card i hope you enjoyed the projects for today if you do give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss the next project and i will see you next time